hi guys um i'm shane um i may or may not know some of you from my dim and distant infamous past um right dave has asked me to talk about my rpg project i don't know if um how many of you have seen the thread on the on the forum but to be honest there's really not that much to show at the moment but i'll show you what I've, what i've got so let me share my screen now right here we go Feel free to just stop me at any time to comment or whatever. Um, anyway, the I'll, I'll give you a very short potted history of this game first. I I wrote the first version of this when I was oh, 13, 14, um, and subsequently an Archimedes version. I never I got to about. 95 percent finished for both versions and as, as somebody said earlier you know, the last five percent is is the hardest um the archimedes version was going to be published by micropower before my university um uh, degree and micro got in the way and micropower went under uh so very briefly what we've got at the moment is same play this the ability to walk around um walk around the cityscape each um i'm using uh, i'm planning to use all four banks of sideways rather this is master only by the way um uh, so it uses all four banks and shadow ram as well now i've rewritten a lot of a lot of stuff that's already out there so the sprite routines for example i mean they will exist out there but um but you know i i it's i feel more co more comfortable using my own routines rather than uh, taking somebody else's i did that last time i didn't really understand how they worked and it's a lot better for me this way um the there are a number of different routines to do specific things so for example there's one separate routine that plots the graphics or plots the sprites to um to a, a temporary sprite which is the, for the view there's another that does the same thing and mirrors um the the sprite there's another one that prints out sprites directly to the screen and there's another one for the text so there's a lot of duplication of code, um, a lot of a lot of redundancy out there. I haven't got round to optimizing yet. And as you can see, there's it's quite a um, a noticeable pause when the when the arrows flick. That's that's the point where I'm pressing the keys. And there's quite a noticeable pause between pressing um, pressing a direction key and the screen updating. The sprites are all run length encoded, um, and the um, decoding is integrated in, into the plot routine. So it decodes as it's um, as it's printing, or as it's plotting rather. The um, it's a fairly simple simple um, schema. It uses the top bits of every of a byte to indicate a non-repeated byte. So there's no there's no inflating of of um, of sizes um each tile set um uncompressed is about 24k it's, it, they they compress down to about oh about 8 8k so two tile sets will fit in one one bank of sideways ram um the plan is to use three banks for um view graphics and the fourth bank for all other in-game graphics like um the font the um anything else that needs to be plotted basically um i've also rewritten i've also got a routine for loading to sideways ram which is 
basically an implementation, an implementation of SR load because the built-in version is quite slow. Um, apart from that, I mean, it's starting to look like I'm going to run out of memory already. I can fit in six six sets of of tiles, um, and that's about it. There's there's going to be probably no room for any animation, a apart from which I'd have to I'd have to um, I have to draw all the animations, which um, is going to be quite time consuming. And the graphics are going to be quite time consuming in the first place. This is going to be one of those projects that gets gradually more and more ambitious as I go along. Um, I mean, at, at this point, there's not really that much more to say about it. Um, the structure of the program is that there will be three separate um, standalone programs, one for the city, one for dungeons, and one for wilderness, or cities rather. Um, so they'll, they'll share data between them. Um, and have probably have to use a lot of overlays. The game logic itself will be mostly written in basic. I'm only calling out to assembler in wherever I, um, I need speed. The sprite routines are not fast. They're not, I wouldn't say they're slow, but they're not fast. Um, and there's probably plenty of room for optimization there. Uh, what else is there to say? Um, oh yes, it's, um, on a DFS disc at the moment, obviously, um, but I may switch that to a DFS just because I'm probably going to need um, need the extra um, the extra number of files on on um, on the disc. Plus, the extra couple of hundred k will be quite useful because the limitation is going to be how much data can I fit onto a single disc. A lot of the graphics will be loaded on demand. So um, monsters, for example, um, there's probably going to be about 60 odd monster graphics, each of which will need to be loaded um, on demand. And um, it'll be more efficient if I can store those as separate files rather than trying to, um, you know, OSGBP be them. I haven't implemented any masking yet. Um, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to do that because that might, I was originally, originally going to use the top bits to indicate a, a mask um, pixel, but obviously if I'm going to compress them, that's, that's not going to be possible. Uh, because the left and right houses are mirrored, there are some slight anomalies. For example, the doors are always um, on the same side. So, hello? my internet connection might be dropping in and out. So, yeah, so as you can see, the, the houses, the, the doors are always on your left, on the right-hand side of this particular house. Um, there are also other minor ones, like houses flip, magically flip around um, as, you, as you walk up to them. Um, as you can see, the blue house on, on the, over here is um, facing to um, the, well, to to the uh, west as it is, the uh, east, sorry. And then, if you walk around the corner, it magically flips around to point in that direction. But I'm just going to have to live with those. There's there's not enough um, there's not enough memory to have all the different tile sets and um, and have the houses pointing in two different directions. Uh, and that's it, more or less, that I've got to show for the moment. Um, yeah, any any comments um, and any feedback, any any suggestions would be welcome. I think it looks great. Um, have you tried packing the basic using um, advanced basic editor to reduce the size and give you more memory? haven't got haven't got that far yet i mean there's only there's only a case worth of basic there anyway but with the amount of sort of combat logic and all the um all the 
item logic and um, so forth. There, there's it's going to need it's going to need overlays. It, it, there's there's no way I'll be able to fit it all in all in memory. At least not with everything I've got planned for it. You know, there may be um, I may have to to cut out features as as we as I go along. But um, but that that's that's the plan that's based on uh, based on what i did for the for the 80s version of this going by my you know um you know memory from from 30 years ago do you need all those tile sets loaded at once the graphics uh <sighs> um Yes, I, I well, all the all the tile sets for any particular, so all the tile sets for that are going to be used in, um, you know, in any particular dungeon level, for example, all the tile sets are going to be used um, in a city. So this this city uses, yes, go on, sorry. No, so you can load about four k a second off a of floppy. So I don't know if that means. Yeah. Um, well, the tiles. The problem is, I mean, if you look at, I mean, just walking around here, that at, at any one time, all three types of different houses might be visible. So I can't really load those from um, uh, from disk. I mean, it looks on, on demand. And I certainly. Sorry, say again. It looks lovely, and I wouldn't worry about the mirroring. Yeah, I mean, you, you. I played through Bard's Tale again recently, and you get that on Bard's Tale as well. So I'll, I'll, I'll live with that. The the biggest concern at the moment is the um, is the speed of the view drawing. But I'm I'm not sure how much faster I can get that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You were saying about masking. You probably weren't going to do it, but presumably you've got two spec. You've got two bits that you're not using. Per byte, anyway, haven't you? One for the um, one for your wrong length in coding. Uh, yeah, at the moment, yeah. Um, the masking, I haven't implemented the, implemented the masking yet, but the but I will need to do that for monster graphics, which will be overlaid on the on the view that you're that you're looking at. All the graphics, by the way, are drawn in GIMP. Um, and I just because it because it can um, display oblong pixels correctly, um, and I just convert from BMP format to uh, to to my sprite format. I've sort of copied how sprite areas work in in Risk OS, and um, I can have multiple sprite areas, and the sprites within each area are indexed. I mean, you know, this is going to be really basic stuff to most of you, but. But you know, I'm I'm still shaking off thirty years worth of, worth of rust. The um the file loading as well. You can load a sector with Oswald Seven F. Um, if you do end up putting it in one big file, um, reading it a byte at a time, the other options are are awful for speed. But you can read sectors fine. You just have to know where they are. Yes, indeed. Indeed, I mean the the graphics might end up being sold in one big file, and I'll just have to to index it and download a bit of the, the bit of um, it that I need at the time. I mean, there's still another there's still another two tile sets left to be used, um, left to be used. Uh, sorry, left to be um, drawn for for cities, and each dungeon um, each dungeon. Can potentially use a, a separate set of um, set of tiles. So one for your standard, um, one for your standard dungeon um, sort of you know, brick wall dungeon. Uh, maybe one for um, caves, that that sort of thing. As I said, it, um, it's it's going to end up being um, being quite ambitious because I, I'm I'm sort of kind of person looks at looks at a game like Dungeon Marsh and think, oh, they, they've got that. I, I, I want that as well. Yeah, yeah I was shocked at how, uh, how ambitious the, the gameplay sounds. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've stolen 
<laughs> quite a lot of these of the graphics from Bard's Tale and Dungeon Master. I mean, I, I, I you know, the, 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 that's the elf girl is is copied directly off a well redrawn from a from a Dungeon Master. Uh, no, from an eye of the eye of the beholder picture actually. So you know, short, short and sweet. But that's that's unfortunately all all the progress I've 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 got to show at the moment. I mean, it's been, um, yeah, it, it's pretty good progress for for about a week's work on it. But um, but you know, it, it's it's slower than than I would have liked. That's oh, fork? and sorry. Sorry, I was just going to ask, how does it work with the four characters then? Do you, um, how do people you mean play the, together or the four separate um, characters? No, no, you've got, um, you've got a party of characters that you create. Um, it's, I, I probably won't allow you to swap characters in and out as you, um, uh, during a, a single game, I haven't decided on that yet. But yes, you, you've got a party of, of four characters. You know, they, I've got a, a fighter, um, uh, um, a ranger, a bard, and a um, and a magician. There, um, sorry, Ringo didn't make the party there. Um, so uh, yeah, and they the different stats, different um, different equipment that they can. Uh, that that um, that they can equip um, certain character classes can use spells. Um, you know your your box standard sort of Dungeons and Dragons adventuring party. It's very colourful. Um, that's that's one thing that's good. That's the about the only thing that's good about it at the moment. Have you thought of um, uh, seeking help from other artists, or is it something you want to do yourself, drawing all the art? Yes, I mean, I know Tricky did um, did offer to uh, to help with some of the graphics. Uh, once I get to that um, to that stage, I, I will certainly I will certainly need help with with uh, with drawing everything. I, I just won't have the time um, time to do it. I, I, you know, I, regarding animation, I, I would love to include animation. But like I said, I, I just don't think there's there's going to, there's going to be enough space. Yeah, it seems pretty tight already. I guess the other question is, um, if you're doing the main logic in basic, I mean, if you if you want to keep basic running, then you're always going to be limited to sort of how much RAM you can steal from a round system. So, I'm guessing the sort of the game logic is going to be too complicated or onerous to translate easily into uh, into assembler. Yes. Yeah, that um, I, well, it, it probably could be, but um, I, I, I'm just not that competent, I'm afraid. And if you want to get it finished any time soon, <laughs> yeah, I guess. yeah. It also doesn't always save that much. Sometimes it costs you. What, what was that? Sorry. Converting sorry, that. some things into assembler doesn't actually make them any smaller. That's yes, true, yeah. and 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 to be honest. Apart from that, there's not a huge amount of gain. I don't think from from doing that. There's there's just you know the uh, the, the, the it, it's it's complicated enough as it is. The idea will be at at some point to um, to release the 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 designer tools for this as well, so so other people can can design their own adventures. I should just chip in. I offered to help with the code. I can't put two pixels together and make them look right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could have some colour cycling in there for simple animation or something. You know, it wouldn't use much CPU or anything, would it? Yeah, possibly. I mean, I <clears throat> my my gut feeling is that is that the kind of images that they are aren't the kind that lend themselves to color cycling animation i mean you know if you've got um if, if you've got a, a, a i don't know for the sake of argument, a, a, a goblin on the screen you really want if you've ever played eye of the beholder they they sort of you know when they attack 
they actually do an attack animation. Um, and that would, if it was possible, that would be the kind of animation I'd, I'd like to have. But, but you know, at, uh, at a rough guess, uncompressed, um, a, uh, a monster graphic is going to take about three and a half K. Um, and it's just, I mean, it, it would be feasible to, to have, um, sorry, my, my laptop might run out of charge at some point. Um, my, um, and, you know, I mean, if, if, it, if there is enough, enough room for it, uh, then, then great. The other thing that um, I'm not planning to have at the moment is sound just because I can't, you know, I, I have absolutely no composition talent whatsoever. <clears throat> I could listen to music and that's it. Sound effects, presumably. Sorry? Are you going to have sound effects? Uh, yes, I, I might do. I mean, sort of depends, depends what it is because the combat, a lot of the combat is going to be text-based. Um, a la Bard's Tale, you know, Goblin hits you for 10 points of damage, etc. Rather than, rather than graphical. Mm. And I think um, once you do that, at some point, the, the, they're just going to become annoying. Yeah, I guess it's a game you play for a long time, isn't it? So if you don't yes. have a good selection, then yeah. yeah. Well, I've I've got fond memories of sitting, sitting in front in front of um, uh, Bard's Tale with um, with graph paper and, and and you know laboriously mapping all the uh, all the dungeons um, and, I, and like I said, I wouldn't want to deprive anybody of that pleasure. And I originally wrote this because my friend had a PC and had Bardstill 2 on it. And, and I wanted, so I only had um, a BBC at the time and I wanted something like that. Um, and unfortunately, we, we never got anything. Uh, we never even really got anything on, on, the, um, on the Archimedes. There was um, that Dungeons game by Fourth Dimension, but that was about it from memory. An Iron Lord which was sort of a role-playing game. Well, keep plugging away. Yep, and I will certainly be, I will certainly be um, mining the forum for, for help and, and um, particularly on, on optimizing all the, uh, um, all the code and, you know, um, and yeah, um, and uh, graphical help, it will be much appreciated. Plus, if anybody's got, got any features they'd like to see in it, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I was just thinking one thing <laughs> would be a lot of work and would mess yeah. your run length encoding, but you could do a video Nula version. So you get 16 colours your, of your choice. Oh, God. Um, it's much easier to draw graphics with a, with a limited palette. I can believe um, and once once you've got the, the whole spectrum to, to choose from it, it's you know that that just makes things a lot they take a well for me it takes a lot longer do you think you might be able to put a sty in there as well in the background that could look quite good uh, a sky yeah you know instead of the blue just the plain blue sort of the the problem the I I I can do the the problem with with that is that all these all these um, tiles are square and therefore the the red ground and the blue sky is is actually part of the of the um, of the tile. I see. Yeah. So I'd have to I'd have to mask it, or I'd have to. Um, or to to I don't know um, replace the blue uh, the light blue with with I don't know black if it's night. But then the problem is um, you know it would it would replace all the 
you know, all the windows would turn black and all the, the shading would turn black, which doesn't quite work. Mm. Unless they can come up with a clever way to mask and, um, you know, and, and code um, as well without, without sacrificing um, any of the compression. You said the uh, drawing of the screen was the slowest part. Do you have any idea sort of why or what's taking the, the time? There? It, I mean, a lot of it is, is just down to, I, I guess, the amount of mode two, um, you know, mode two pixels that, that have to be that have to be drawn. Some of the logic um, at the moment, the logic for actually deciding which tiles to draw is written in basic. Now, I convert that to, um, to machine code, and that will. Um, that will speed things up a bit, but there's going to be. I, I'm going to have to put in some fairly clever um, logic to um, to figure out which um, which tiles to draw and which which not to draw. It. So it would seem we've lost his uh, his connection. I guess the battery died. Yeah, I don't think it looked particularly slow. Well, it's not a game where you run around in real time, is it? No, definitely, definitely not. It's a game you run around in real time, actually. Hello. Yep. You hear back. me? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I um, uh, my laptop ran out of charge, and so I'm on my desktop at the moment. But unfortunately, it doesn't have um, Work. it doesn't have uh, a camera on it, so well, I'm audio only now. I'm afraid. We had a brief discussion where you were gone, and um, in my opinion, it it doesn't look particularly slow. Um. It, it kind of seems to suit the style of game that it is. Yeah, and and the fact that um, you know uh, that the the routine, the graphic routines aren't, you know, they're they're not. Op I haven't optimized the hell out of them. Um, it's not the kind of game that particularly needs really fast graphics. So to a point, I can get away with. It. I, I I mean, of of course, I'd like the um, I'd like the graphics to be instant. Uh, you know the the um, each view redraw to be instant, but I just don't think I um, that's going to happen. Is it? Is it? Sorry, because I came in a bit late. But is the whole thing written in basic this game, or did you use bits of assembler uh, for the sprite routine? For for all the um, the sprite routines, the um, the uh, um, you know the 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 text um, uh, the, the the text um, plotting, um, yeah, that that's all an assembler. But the actual, um, but the actual, uh, um, you know, the, the actual um, game logic, as it were, is is in is in basic. I've noticed the the legend um, nomenclature in the file name. Is that yes. a hint towards a possible future uh, name for the game? Or uh... yes, my original my original game was called was called Legend. Ah, right. I see. That's yeah. that's um, so. Uh, this is this is the completion of of a project I started thirty years ago. So um, uh, so yes. Can you uh, could you possibly bump it up to full screen so we can have a, yeah, a good hang on. look at those uh, those pixels? There just, we go. Thank God you didn't wait for a few years to do this. Why? Why is that? I'm kidding. Thirty years—that's a long time to pick up a project. Good job. Well. You see, I, I mean, unfortunately, I lost all the code to my previous versions, um, and uh, yeah, so so I've got nothing to. I, I'm starting it from from scratch. <coughs> you know, Sarah yeah. th Sarah thought um, putting her project down for for seven years was was long. Yeah, that's did tough. you say the tiles were pixel wise? Sorry. Um, pixel wise what size are the tiles 
Um, they vary in size. That um, I mean that the ha that house, for example, is um, is is one tile. But oh, okay. in fact, I'll show you the I'll show you the tiles. Uh, where is it now? Um, Bear with me. Hmm. The tiles vary in size between about. 16 pixels high to um to i think it's about um 100 pixels 100 odd pixels yeah. so that's one complete tile set i was wondering if you if you had a little map in memory of what tiles you've already plotted um, and whether things like parts of the ground and parts of the sky, you could just say, well, I've already plotted that tile before, so I don't need to plot it again. Um, each tile is only plotted once for the, um, for, for the block that's, that's in that uh, map location. What it wastes time on at the moment is that some... Um, tile it, it plots from from the back um, towards you so some tiles that are completely obscured by buildings in front of them are are still drawn I need to build in some some logic to to stop that from happening but that will save a little bit of time but you know yeah. um, but I don't know how much it how, how much it will at the moment I think I think if you I mean it depends what the overlaps are, but I think that may well be a, a, if you want more performance a good avenue to look down because all you have to do because your tiles are um, rectangular, all you have to do is have a look around the boundary um, of your yes, tiles. but um, but you see a lot of a lot of the quite a lot of the time some of the tiles are only partially obscured. So if you if you look at the view at the moment, um, that tile there is is only partially obscured by this one. So it still needs to be plotted. But what it does is it plots the whole tile, and then overlays the other one on top of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah so there I could guess. be some there it, could be some gain there by only plotting part of the tile that that needs you know the part the part that's only only the visible part i'm not sure how how i go about that at the moment but um that's that's another that's another possibility yeah it, may, it becomes slightly trickier when you're trying to do decompression at the same time um what does your um inner loop look like in your sprite routine uh it looks like i mean Description's fine, but obviously codes. Yeah, nice. it's um, all it does um, at the moment is um, it loads the it loads the byte to be plotted, um, and the inner loop only uh, only loads the byte to be plotted and then um, uh, plots it to to memory and then decrements the counter. Sorry, there is also a check to see whether the repeat byte counter has run down to zero, and then if it has, it branches out to the routine that gets the next byte. I was wondering if you could um, like decompress a strip and then copy that to the screen, decompress the next strip, whatever size strip that happens to be. 
Um, well, may not say much. I'm, I'm. You see, I, I wonder if that wouldn't be that wouldn't actually be slower because then you're decompressing, saving it to temporary memory, um, and then plotting that to to the screen. Whereas at the moment, I'm just fetching the byte, um, doing the decompression calculation, as it were, and then writing the result to the screen or to the to, to the plot area. Could you um, have a look at what the um, length byte is and then jump to uh, code depending upon that length byte? Uh, you mean um, unbundling the loop? Yes, well, that's... Yeah, that, that, that's, that's... But also, because you know how much you're going to plot in, in, in there, you don't even ha have the loop. You just jump straight to a piece of code that goes black, 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 black because it knows it's going to do it four times. Yeah, the other, the, the other, sorry, the other thing that the, that the loop, um, that the inner loop does is when it gets to um, a character boundary, um, it obviously, uh, the, the sprites are stored in column-wise format. So it, it has the first column of pixels then the second column of pixels and so forth, just because that's, that's a lot easier to plot. Um, uh, vertically rather than story storing in 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 character cell format um so the the inner loop um if i've if i'm plotting over a over a character boundary the inner loop just then adds um whatever offset it needs to do to move down to the next line Any, anybody, any other comments or questions or suggestions? You could possibly unroll it in character row chunks. So storing eight bytes and mixing the decompression in with it, but make it a bit fiddly, quite a big routine. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the, there's only, at the moment, there's only about one and a half K of, um, not even that, one and a quarter K of, of um, assembler in there, um, and I've still got, I've still got most of main memory left to um, left to play with. So, so you know, a bit of big routine is not not necessarily not necessarily an issue. I guess the other thing is, if you only run length and code it within eight bytes, then you wouldn't have to worry about crossing a row boundary while you're reading compressed. Um, Probably won't cost too much. Yeah, the reading, um, the reading isn't isn't a problem. It, it's the it's you know when when it's when it's written, but That's because right. it's it, because it's plotting to a I suppose because it's plotting to a temporary area. I could, um, I could necessarily I could build all the logic to blitz the temporary to screen. I could make the the te the, the the plot area column wise and then build all the logic to um uh to blit it um into the blitting routine because that will always know or that will always be blitting the same location on screen that was an idea that that could be a bit faster what size screen is that is that full size or is that What's what's that? The the temporary drawer area? No, it's only it's only a quarter screen. But a quarter of kind of of a mode two screen. A quarter of one to eight. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So five k. A page and a quarter wide. Yes. Page and a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. So eighty by one to eight. Is that what? Hmm. I wonder if you can't draw your strips, if you can't kind of transpose it as you go from your tempi area to screen. That's that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So um, transposes it, but so lay out the lay out the temporary area, um, so I don't need to worry about page boundaries, and then do the actual tra um, transposing as I blit it. Yeah. Because they, because I always it's always going to be blitted to the to the top left hand. 
left hand corner so yeah. i don't need to worry about calculating you know page boundaries uh, sorry character boundaries and, and all, all that sort of thing and that that probably would be faster actually yeah Yeah, I mean that could be quite. It could end up being quite a chunky routine, but well, you know, you I in columns. So you do do basically two columns. So it's a loop. Yeah, you could get it pretty fast. Yeah, if I'm if I'm not having to worry about that off the um, off the uh, off the actual plot routine as well. Um, there's plenty of space in there. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That that's that's something to um to bear in mind. Yeah. And then you could make sure that you didn't um your run length encoding didn't go past the end of a a. Uh, of a vertical stripe so you don't you wouldn't need to check here have i got to the bottom of the 160 or whatever it is in um the, yeah yeah inside that part of the loop yeah although with some of these graphics um obviously like uh, that one on the left I, I i tend to use a lot of dithering so um <sighs> Uh, whereas other whereas other stuff at the moment the the I I only in, um, encode a maximum of 127 bytes anyway. Yeah. So I don't know whether that would that would um, yeah you know, I don't know how much that would have affect the the compression. I imagine probably not a lot. It doesn't look like that one, for example, would wrap around from the bottom to the top anyway. No. Extra. No, it, it's it's really only the ones with large amount of black space. Yeah, well, I'm saying it didn't seem too slow to me anyway. But since that's the sort of thing that I, <laughs> I'm yeah, I mean, nice <laughs> you know, um, I I fired up um, Dungeon Master again, and yes, it it is instantaneous. Although there is, well, it's not not really instantaneous. There is a, a bit of a, a, a flicker, but but you know, um, we are talking about two megahertz master here. Yeah. Um, the the other thing is, um, I actually ended up using my my sprite code is master only um, because I ended up using um, <coughs> excuse me um, <coughs> indirect addressing with that um, uh, you know with that without the Y register which I didn't realise was only was only available on on the master's processor. Yeah. Yeah, my decompression ends up having to keep X at zero nearly all the time because so, it's, it's obviously using one for source and Y for dest, so it can. Hmm. Yeah, the the other thing I could I I'm trying to do is free up either um, either the X or Y registers in my in my routine because then I mean when I at, at the moment um, when I fetch the next byte I write um, the the byte to be plotted. Um, I write both the counter and the byte to be plotted to zero page. Then I load it again and write that to um, the screen memory. Now, if I could keep um, the byte to be plotted in, um, you know, in in uh, in a register throughout the loop, I can save a couple of cycles per um, per pixel. Yeah. Yeah. But like I say, this is this is all, you know. I've um, it's 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 hard enough at at the moment. I spent about three hours last night um, debugging a, a missing clear carry, <laughs> my um, sideways RAM loading routine. Yeah, <laughs> I know that feeling. I'm I'm not using any um, I'm not using BBASM at the moment. I'm I'm just typing the code into a text file then and then compiling it on the on the emulator. Okay. It'd probably help if I if I did use BBASM, but I'll 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 get around to that at some stage. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll see how big it gets. I mean, you can, with Bebasm on the PC, I can assemble one of my games, which is you know, usually about 16K of code and data, then brute force, compress it, write out a, a, a text file full of EQUBs, and then include that in another Bebasm thing, a 16K of whatever it's compressed to, 12K of data, put, to put a ROM header and a loader on it, yeah, and spin up the editor, in the, spin up an emulator, and that's about a second and a half. Yeah, oh, um, question, if anybody, uh, I'm assuming somebody knows the answer. Which version of um, ADFS does the master come with? Does it, is it um, the same version as the Electron? Uh, I have a master just here. 1.5. Um, In other words, is, is it the one that needs the dummy file on it? No. Right. Okay. Okay, in which case ADFS may be, may be a better choice for me then. I, somebody mentioned on the forum that it has a, um, it has a faster implementation of um, OS get by put by. If, if you can just read and write 256 bytes and read write sector effectively, that will be much faster. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, sorry. I really think that, that that what you've got there is good enough. Yeah. Yeah, I really do think that. And I think that whilst um, working towards getting faster updates to the screen is, is a good idea, um, I, I would concentrate more on getting getting some meat on the bones and getting a game. Because yes, indeed. I, I reckon most people would happily play that. Very yeah. wise words, Simon. Yes, um, I, I, I think the, the optimization of the sprite routines is is for a, for a much later later date. There's there's enough to be to be um, getting on with with you know just putting a game together at, at the moment. To be honest, I haven't even finished planning the the character and and combat systems, but the combat system is going to be more of a mix of of sort of Japanese RPG rather than uh, uh, than just pure traditional Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, so if, if you're prepared to share the code, I'm sure there'll, there'll be members on the forum who will look at your sprite code and um, be able to help at um, tweaking it. Um, yes, I will do. I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to share it. Um, you know, like, like I said, the, the sprite routines probably already exist out there. Um, well, they, they definitely exist out there. I, you know, I, I use the ones from the Creative Assembler book um, all those years ago. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just prefer to, to use my own routines. And I, but I'm more than happy to, to share. They, you know, um, once I've got them down, they might even be useful to somebody. I fully understand about using your own routines. <laughs> fully understand that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to embarrass myself with um, with my uh, with my coding um, at the moment, though. No, no need to feel embarrassed. I've forged my code, and that's that's awful. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure we. I'm sure we all we all have the we all have that feeling. I think um, you might want to have a chat with Flibble about JRPG combat systems. I think he's just about to try and put one of those into his game that he's doing. Oh, right. Uh, I think he's doing it in C, but I'm sure the, okay. the principles and what what would be, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm, so. <laughs> I'm 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 a huge fan of JRPGs, but um, uh, so you know, I, I'm not going to copy anybody's anybody's system. It's just. Um, but I'm going to base it base it on that, you know, with with your with different classes having special attacks and special abilities and and whatnot. Um, yeah. So uh, so so watch this watch this space. Okay. Thanks. Um, thanks, Shane, for that, and thanks um, mm -hmm. everyone who's um, posted in chat and um, you know given so much input as well.
and do check the chat out before we close it all down. It's been very busy throughout the talk. Um, yeah, I'd just ask anyone who's you know on the forum, keep an eye on the new gaming development threads. Um, and if you are able to you know, give some input, there is already, I think, a build you can download for Shen. Yes, that's, that's a bit earlier than this one, but I'll, I'll, I'll upload the, the latest, latest version and stick some, code on, um, stick some of the um, assembly on there as well. If people can get, give it a try and post some feedback, that's the thing. It's very hard uh, to get feedback on on new projects. I think also Andrew's posted recently posted another build of his um, moon base escape adventure game, text adventure game, which he's massive, massively improved now, uh, massively expanded. So I think he, he could do with some feedback as well.